Recently, I spoke to the guy that I had that sexual experience with and he confirmed to me that he was not HIV positive. This video is about safety and living a healthy life. Most people have the notion that HIV AIDS is something that won't affect them. But the truth of the matter is, it is closer than we realized. In Ghana, over 340,000 people live with HIV AIDS, with the highest rates in the greater Accra region, the eastern region, and also the Ashanti region of Ghana. And this is a publication made by citynewsroom.com as of 19 June 2024. Across Africa, more than a million people live with this reality each and every day, regardless of their background, their beliefs, and also their status. This video is important because it shows how the mistakes that we often do without thinking about will change our lives forever. Meet Miss Opielua, a Nigerian who is HIV positive, shares how she unexpectedly contracted the virus, how she was diagnosed, and also how she remains strong despite everything. Welcome to I Am Positive. My name is Okweoloa. I've been asked to go into the ward to go get a blood sample from a certain patient. So this woman was in a select gown. I remember she was in a select gown. She had a family and friends there as well because she was literally weak, you know. So when I wanted to take her blood, I didn't have my gloves on, which was very, very silly and naive of me. Like, it was, it was stupid. That's it. So... I got there, I tried to take her blood sample, but she didn't have any blood in her anymore. Like, the only thing that was coming out of her body was literally a colorless fluid. Like, she was almost gone. And unfortunately for me, I had a cut on my thumb, right, at the time, which I got from the kitchen. You see, it takes courage to admit in to something, especially that which comes with serious implications. For getting to wear gloves, according to what she said, is a crucial reminder for all health professionals and also individuals to never let our guard down when it comes to safety. Her honesty about the whole situation is a crucial lesson for all of us to take our safety into our own hands and also to protect ourselves and also the people around us. So as soon as I got back into the lab, as I was saying, oh, that woman does not have blood in her body, this is the only thing I got. The head of the laboratory was like, oh, where is your glove? I'm like, um, I didn't wear my glove. And then it was like, don't you know what XYZ is? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it was literally <laughs> screaming. And I said, no, I don't. That's HIV. It's blah, blah, blah. Somebody gets me a jig. Soak her hand inside. So they soaked my hands. I did my HIV test immediately. It was negative. I think I did it about three months after two. And it was still negative. So, you can see my confusion. And I'm sure even before I went to NYSC, which was in 2015, no, 2014 actually, I still tested and it was negative. So my head is crumbled and all over the place as well. And I don't know how I got it. I don't know accurately how I got it. And the funny thing is, even if the guy had come to say, oh, you were HIV positive and you did this and I'm sorry, I would be mad. Why it wasn't specified by Opelua that the sexual encounter that she had with a then boyfriend was protected, personally, I think it makes a crucial point. You know, I know that there are some of you out there who find abstinence, that's total abstinence, you know, a challenge. But then what you're supposed to do is to protect yourself and that is non-negotiable. It is about taking the responsibility of yourself and also your partner very serious. Let us try as much as possible to be mindful and also to adhere to taking preventive measures and also respecting protocols. I was at the office on a Monday morning and I got a message from my cousin saying that, oh, Ope, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, what is it about? Just give me a hint. He said, no, you can call me after work. I said, no, I'm not calling you after work. Tell me what it is. And then he says, you remember the last blood test we did? I say yes. Um, little backstory, I usually just go to the lab where my cousin works just to get tested for like malaria, blood sugar and stuff like that. Just see if I'm healthy and everything. And out of my cousin's curiosity this time, pardon me, he decided to test my blood for HIV. Anyway, he said he would tell me after. So I asked him, give me a hint, is it STI? And then he says yes. So I said, I'm going to call you immediately. I excused myself from that meeting. 
I stepped out to receive the call and then, yeah, he told me that I was HIV positive. I think that what I felt was a mix of many emotions. There's no telling exactly or pinpointing what I felt at that moment. It was rage, it was self-pity, it was anger, it was confusion, you know. It was a lot at the time. And I, I remember clearly what I saw in my mind that day. It was, excuse me, literally like a building collapsing. Because I mean, I was in my 20s. I had a job. I was in a relationship that was heading towards marriage. And then this happens. So it felt like my life had crashed and I need to just rearrange the pieces, you know, from the foundation. And I thought, how am I going to do it? How is that even possible? Anyway, because I was outside, I couldn't cry. I had to put on a smiling face, but on the inside, I was dying. Like, my whole life was literally crashing. And the people that were passing in front of me, my colleagues, nobody knew it. That's how good I am at masking emotion, I guess. Wow, that is incredible. Her ability to manage her emotions after being diagnosed with HIV shows or is a testament to her strength. I know situations like this is very tough and for her to maintain her composure shows her resilience. Her experiences teaches us to be compassionate to ourselves and also to other people, especially during these challenging times. I went on my sales call and that was my routine for the next two weeks or about one month. Go home, cry myself to sleep like, I don't even remember sleeping off. I just know I cry and then the next morning I wake up and then it's time for work. I get to work and I laugh like it's nothing. Google was literally my best friend at the period. Anyway, the first step was to tell my boyfriend at the time, then my vicar in church, then a senior colleague at work because I felt like those were like the support system that I needed at that moment. I mean, my cousin already knows who is, already, who is a part of my family. So I thought, okay, there's somebody in my family that knows as well. Anyway, if you are watching this, you are probably asking yourself, why is Okwe doing this? And my question back to you would be, why not? For every one person that I've told about my status, none of them have ever said that, oh, Okwe, I know somebody personally who is also dealing with this. And Nigeria is, Nigeria has the largest population of HIV in West Africa. So it's not possible that at least one of those people do not know one person, except that one person is not telling them because they don't want to be stigmatized. That is mind-boggling, seriously, because statistics shows that, you know, there are considerable a number of people who are being infected or affected with HIV. And now that you have been diagnosed with HIV, you can't even find a single soul who is in the same soup with you. I could feel how lonely you were, but looking at how you were communicating or you are communicating, it looks like you are a very strong person, so someone who is very resilient. Right, trying to create more awareness about it, educate people about it, but those that are negative and those that are positive, and trying to make you see that you can be HIV positive and fine, like there's really nothing wrong. I'm an HIV victor, I'm positive, and I don't even think that I look like I'm HIV positive, right? Yeah, right, I don't. Another reason why I'm doing this is because I feel like it's a final point of my healing. For every one person I felt, I told, I felt freer, I felt liberated, I felt like there was nothing holding me back. And now that I'm telling everybody, I feel like, yeah, finally, nothing can hold me back now. I'm free and I'm, and I'm finally healed, right? Yeah, so that's it. A Pilewa story. It's a profound reminder that living with HIV is not the end of the world. It's about taking action or it's a call to action. If you or someone that you know is being diagnosed with HIV, kindly ask the person to do three things. According to me, three things. Ask the person to just accept the situation and also to forgive him or herself and also to take the medications regularly which is a key to living a healthy life. Let us use Opilwe's story as a source of strength and also a reminder to living a proactive life. And Opilwe, if you're watching me right now, me, 
together with the people of Ghana, Africa, and the whole world, are grateful for the opportunity to use your video to educate and inform and also to serve as a reminder to the people out there. Guys, I've located a link to her channel and also her details at the YouTube video description. Go, she has a series of videos that she has been releasing. Go and watch the videos and learn something from her. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think and share this video to your loved one. My name is Ambassador Vix. See you next time in another episode. Sokoto, Mayande.